Hi, I'm Jay Tyler. This is the third and final video in our three-part series on silver soldering. In this video, I'm going to actually do some soldering on camera, and we're going to show you the application of what we learned in the other two videos. All right, the first thing I'm going to solder is a quad helix appliance that has just a single wire that goes across the band and so this is going to be the solder area right here and so I'm going to first get my flame adjusted I'm going to be using this jeweler's torch and I'm going to add some oxygen to the propane and just kind of back and forth and back and forth until I get it the way I want now if I keep adding oxygen to it, it gets real light blue. Add more oxygen, oxygen to it and it gets even lighter blue. That's pretty hot. That's a little hotter than I want. Now if I back it off, it turns a lighter blue. So what I want is I want to go right at that point of light blue and dark blue. I want to get right in the middle there. That's about where I want it to be right right about there so it's not too hot this thing gets up to a little over 5,000 degrees I don't want that now I'm going to heat up this flux and it's a boric acid based compound and I don't want to breathe the fumes from that so I'm going to put a fan on I have in the vicinity I'll put it on low so I can kind of talk over it but I want to draw these fumes away from me now I've got a clean brush, I've got clean flux. I'm going to heat this up a little bit, just a little bit, and put the flux on there. Kind of goes sizzle and goes in there. Okay, so now I have flux over the area, and I'm going to sweat it. So I'm going to just put my heat back and forth over it. Let the flux melt. And as soon as the metal starts to get a little red, I'm going to try to get some... Okay, there the initial solder went on. I'm going to move the heat around. Now the metal is... the solder has sweated onto the solder area. So we have that diffusion zone that's already occurred there. Now I'm going to heat it, and I think I've got enough flux on there, and just add... Get a lot in here a little closer. And just add a little solder on top of it. Just enough heat to melt it. You can see the solder kind of has that gelatinous look to it that we talked about. Okay, so it has sweated good. It has been coated with a low melting temperature solder, so everything is covered. That joint should be pretty good. Now, I'm going to show you what happens. I'm going to go over here on this side. I'll show you what happens if I just put the flux on there and I don't heat it up beforehand. We'll see if we can make it pool. So I'm going to use a little flux. Now, there's a lot of discussion I've heard about how much flux you put on. If you put on too much flux, it could cause it to bubble and all, but it will, it will vaporize. Um, I don't think it's a real serious reason for bubbling. Contaminants and overheating the solder are the two biggest reasons for bubbling. Uh, if I'm going to err on s solder, I'm going to err on the side of too much, I mean on flux, I'm going to err on the side of too much flux. Now, s I don't know if you can tell, but the flux is melted up here, but there's no flux down below. There's no flux down in, down in this area. So that's what you can run into if you don't heat up the wire before you put the flux on. So I always like to run a little heat on there and then put the flux in there and it kind of sizzles and runs that flux everywhere. Okay, so we're going to try this again. Make sure I'm in the frame. <laughs> okay. Now I have heated that a pretty good lick, so it's it flows. It has sweated the area, and let me add just a little bit of that gelatinous solder on top of that. So now it's well covered. It has sweated real well and been covered real well. Alright, let me show you a couple of tricks here. Let's 
take this one out and um, let's do this one. Now this is a quad helix and it's exactly the same design as this one that we showed you earlier in the other video. Let me get my light out of the view here. Okay, I'm going to put this in the stand, clamp it down. Now this one's got more wire in it. There's more to solder here. Now one of the problems is getting the initial flow, the sweating, to occur properly. And what you can do to help that out is to take a wire and put just a little bit of solder on the end of it, just kind of coat the end of it. And then when we put the solder to the joint, as it, the capillary action starts drawing it to, into the joint, we can use this wire as kind of a probe to kind of paint the solder over the wires and into all the cracks and crannies. So that's what I'm going to do with this little probe right here. I'm going to use my clean brush and kind of heat up my joint a little bit. Get the flux on it. All right, now I'm going to put just a little bit of solder onto it after the flux melts. Okay, now I'm going to take this little probe I've got here and just kind of move that solder around. The reason I put a little solder on the end of that is kind of make it all the same. Uh, if I if I don't do that, this wire, see how see how that wire is oxidized? Well, if I didn't put solder on there, it would have oxidized immediately as I was trying to use it as a probe. But with a little solder on there, it kind of coats it and keeps that oxidation from getting into the solder joint and contaminating it. Now, because I use that probe, I've got a real good sweating going on there. I mean, that is really good. Now, if I want, I can reflux that. There's no problem doing that. It just makes sure that the you have a good tight barrier against oxidation and then I'm going to build up some solder on top of that now I move my flame in and out back and forth in and out to control the heat there we go we got a pretty good cover everything is covered up the wire is tapered so it's covered up on that end there's no exposed wire tip sticking out. If you have a wire tip sticking out, the fluids of the mouth are somewhat corrosive to this material. They could get in there and undermine the integrity of that diffusion zone and uh, could cause it to come loose. But that's another reason that I like to use a nickel alloy solder because I have a good strong chemical adhesion as well as that good mechanical adhesion. So here we go. Okay, that's the initial. Now I've got myself another probe here. This is a clean one with a little bit of solder on it. I'm going to use it to kind of paint this solder around and we'll get it molten again. Now the probe is freestanding. It gets very hot and solder follows heat. So now look at that. See how it's oxidized? Without that little dollop of solder on the end that would have contaminated that solder area. Now uh, I'm going to just reflux a little bit. So as you can see soldering is really a two-step process. The first step is the sweating and the second step is adding that bulk to it. Now if you get this solder just at the right temperature where it just barely melts you can polish that and it will be just so pretty it will not have porosity if you get it too hot it's going to have porosity if you don't keep it clean those contaminants could combust vaporize and cause problems one of those problems would be porosity i think i've beaten that horse enough <laughs> okay Let's do another one. I'm going to show you something else here. Now, if you're just starting out and you're having a little trouble getting that sweating process going, here's something that'll help you out. 
I've, it's kind of a variation of what I just did. I've got a wire and I've got like a blob of solder on the end of it. And I've got one on each end here. Now I can use this blob as my initial solder that I use for the sweating. So let's try that out on this solder joint back here. Okay, first I'm going to put the flux on. A little bit of heat flux right there. A little bit of heat flux back here. Clean my brush. Go back into my reagent container. Get some more flux. A little bit of heat flux right there. A little bit of heat and flux back here. I'm going to add some more flux right there. A little bit more flux around. Okay. So on this, just where the wire comes in, on that anterior arm of this RPE appliance, I'm just going to add solder, let it sweat, and then add bulk, <coughs> some bulk to it. And we'll use the probe on the posterior part of it. This is a pretty simple solder joint. Okay, it's sweated. I'm going to just add a little bit of... Okay, there we go. So then back here, in the posterior part, I'm not going to use the solder right now. I'm going to use this instead. And I'm going to get a little bit of flux on it. That's quite a bit of flux. Okay, a little bit of flux. Going to heat up the joint and the solder that's now that wire is freestanding this big wire is freestanding it's going to take solder pretty quickly I want to go ahead and put it on there and then I'm going to use the same solder to move around see I'm using that as kind of like a little paintbrush just to paint the solder where I want it to go this is a real good technique for beginners so that you get a good sweat good diffusion zone built up there now if you're a beginner, you'll probably want to reflux. I'm not a beginner, but I like to reflux anyway, just to make sure. And then I'm going to add the bulk to the solder joint. Now this has a big wire sticking out. I want to add quite a bit of solder to this. And I want it all to be in that gelatinous zone that between that right above or just barely above that liquidus the low end of the liquidus zone there we go so I've got that completely covered the end of the wire is covered that should polish out and look pretty nice let's go over here and do the same thing Okay, I believe that's pretty good. Now this particular appliance, it's got four solder joints all hooked together in the, into that RPE screw. And uh, that's, you know, if, if one of them were to come loose or break or something, you got plenty to hold it together. But, you know, we don't want that to happen. But even if it did, it wouldn't be that, you know, that terrible. It wouldn't break off and the patient swallow it. Notice I just heated that up and just added a little more to it. Okay, I'm going to use this probe back here. Put a little flux on it. Like I say, this big wire is freestanding. It's going to get hot quicker than anything. I'll put that solder on there. Use this as kind of like a little paintbrush. Paint it around. Get down under here. Heat. Solder follows the heat. So there we go. We got a good, really good sweating going on there. That's phase one in the soldering. Probably the most crucial part of it. So we've got the bond. Now we're going to build up the bulk. Just enough heat to barely melt it. Now you can if you want, you can put some flux on your solder. It doesn't hurt to do that. 
sometimes it kind of helps it flow better all right I think it's going to polish out and be very very nice so let me uh, clean these up and uh, I'll polish a couple of them so we can see what they look like here's the first appliance we soldered it's the quad helix and this one I just added the solder to it I didn't use a probe and we just let capillary action draw the solder into the solder area and here it is polished on this side you can see it's covered pretty well um, you can tell on this side it could have been sweated a little better and had I used the probe I could have gotten it a little better but that's that's adequate and it's covered up nicely it's not a porous joint that should hold up very nicely okay then we used the probe on this one to move the solder around we got a real good sweating on this and then it polished up on this side very nicely everything's covered there's no porosity the ends of the wires are tapered they're completely encased so this will hold up very nicely and here's the um, RPE appliance we did we got plenty of good sweating on that and a good ca uh, covering encasement this is the one we use the dollop of solder on the end of the wire as the sweating solder and it turned out very nicely and there's the polished version of it there so it's um, not porous nice and shiny everything's covered up that should work very very well all right that's it for this soldering series i will see you next week